The Bread and Butter podcast acknowledges the Yagara people and the Turbal people as the traditional custodians of Mainjin, the lands on which we record today. We pay our respects to the Yagara and Turbal elders, past, present, and emerging. This podcast is brought to you by Hey Al Productions. Did I say good? Did I get you into it one more time? Maybe just in case. Okay. Bread and Better Podcast. <laughs> okay. Bread and Better Podcast. I feel like I am. <clears throat> Bread and Better Podcast. Hello and welcome to Bread and Better. We believe that better begins with us and we love talking about women's issues and how we can be better for not only ourselves but also those that we impact, be it our children or our friends and family. I'm Alex, owner of Hey Our Productions, producer and co-host of this show. And I am Tegan. And as well as doing the pod with Alex, I have an online coaching business, coaching people in nutrition and movement. But the key component to change is almost always mindset. Recently, I was having a conversation with a client who was in a real funk and I was reflecting with her on times in my life that I've really felt that too. It was helpful for me to share with her my experience with this and what I did. And that made me think that it might be helpful for you guys as well. I know Alex has also experienced funks in her life too, especially with her mental health and bipolar, as she has shared before. So today's episode is going to be really open and honest conversation about when we've really struggled in life and how we've pulled ourselves out of those places. This episode will have themes of mental health, so if you are someone that is struggling at the moment, please just be aware of that. We always approach mental health topics with honesty, but also with compassion for those that might be feeling low currently. If you are someone that is struggling at the moment, please find the resources in our show notes and know that you can always talk to us in our DMs. All right. Best thing you ate in the last week. I have a good one. Do you? I do. I... Um, have recently started shopping at Audi. Oh, I like Audi. My friend Gemma has been bugging me to shop at Audi. Like you our saved entire heaps of money. friendship. Well, I didn't shop there at first because they didn't have a lot of gluten free stuff. Right. Um, but I went there recently and they had all of this new stuff. And then I was like, I'm just gonna give it a go. And I I think I bought two dinners, no, three dinners, four lunches. And just random stuff like juice and poppers and stuff. And it came to $85. Mm, It's so much cheaper. At Woolworths, that would be like 300 bucks. Yeah. No joke. So I bought two racks of baby back pork ribs. Ooh. And I did them over like two hours in the oven with some stub sauce. Your favourite? My favourite thing in the world. And I did it with a kale slaw and sweet potato chips. And it was bloody delicious. Like, so good. Yum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kids were like, this is amazing. Why don't you cook this all the time? And I was like, well, now that we're shopping at Aldi, I can afford to. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Well, mine is also a pork product. (laughs) Oh. We had Christmas in July on the weekend. Nice. And Casey did a glazed ham Mm. and it was just like it was cooked to perfection. It was so moist. Yeah. Uh, And the glaze was delicious. And she did like two So we kind of had the Christmas lunch Mm -hmm. and then later on in the evening, everyone just had a bit of ham. Yeah. It was very, very good ham. Nice. I still think daily about the ham I did at Christmas. You should do a mid-year ham. I should do a mid-year ham. Actually. Aldi might have one. Gemma again. Maybe this is where she got it from. A few weeks ago, she was having a roast. I was like, what are you having? And she said ham. And I was like, what? I would never think to do that other than Christmas. Yeah. Maybe I'll give it a go. Yeah. We are all going to experience ruts and highs and lows in life. It's totally normal. Remember the law of duality. Everything has a complementary opposite within the whole. Without the dark times, we aren't able to fully appreciate the light. I am always a firm believer in taking time to acknowledge and feel your emotions, to allow yourself to feel down and to feel sad when you are, but then to take action to change your reality. I just would like to acknowledge my privilege in saying this as someone who hasn't experienced any major mental health struggles myself and that your experiences, I don't know, Alex's may be a little bit different to this. 
As I've spoken about uh, a few times and specifically in the bipolar episode, I've experienced regular highs and lows, though they are pretty much uh, settled now that I am medicated and seeing a psychiatrist regularly. With those big ruts, however, like specifically in my case and in other people's cases with mental health issues, I would really recommend seeing a psychologist. But today we're just going to talk a bit more about like the regular ruts that we find ourselves in, whether they're big or small. Yeah. So I think to start off, I'll talk about what was quite a big rut for myself. And this is what I was sharing with my client Um, when I was working in the hospitality industry, when I was kind of approaching my mid twenties, then I'd been in a career that I had previously loved, but some things about it had changed. And I think some health habits had kind of like accumulated. So I kind of got to the point where my mental health was quite low, just like general mental health, like not, not to say that I was depressed or anything like that, but just to say that I was really kind of not feeling my usual sort of um, happy self. I wasn't enjoying my work anymore. And I'd often find myself in tears on the way to work because I really didn't want to go and deal with what was happening there on any given day, I found that I was angry like all the time. So like just little things would make me fly off the handle and I didn't have very good boundaries in place, which I've talked about before. So I often felt like people were taking advantage of me. But now that I'm a bit more mature and I know a bit more, I know that that was probably a lack of my boundaries allowing that to happen. And like I said, I wasn't looking after myself physically. So I was drinking a lot, smoking, eating poorly. I didn't really exercise at all. And all of that accumulated to me feeling like pretty unhappy with where my life was and where it was going at the time. Yeah. Um, so just like looking at things on a day-to-day basis, like I was really quite sad and quite angry and I was just, yeah, not not in a good place. Yeah. So what did I do? And it's, it's funny like looking back in hindsight that I didn't realise like it wasn't like I was like, okay, this is my action plan. Yeah. But it was like, you know, you get to that point in life and if anyone is, if anybody's been there and it probably is, it can be really related to like your career or your living circumstance, like something that's like a massive part of your life and yeah. you just like don't like it and you don't think, oh, you know, what am I going to do to make it change? But you do look for like little things to do. So the big thing I wanted to do is just to do something for me. Yeah. And I started training with a personal trainer at the gym that I went to at the time. And I was kind of at the point where I would go once a week and do the session with him, but I wasn't really confident enough to go and train myself on Mm. the gym floor. So I ended up like spontaneously enrolling in a PT course. And my whole um, motivation behind that was just to be confident enough to train myself. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking about turning it into a career. Yeah. It was just like, I just need to do something for me. And I'm at the point where I'm, you know, starting to get back into my health and fitness. And I just want to feel really confident with that. So I just enrolled in this PT course and I couldn't afford it. Yeah. Like I put it on a payment plan, which was probably, you know, a little bit more, like I made it work, but it wasn't like, like now I would just sign up to a course that I could pay for up front. But it was like, I've got no money, but I'm going to commit to this new thing. And I've got this car loan and yeah paying rent. Um, but the like flip side of that was it was also improving my, me- like, like my physical health and my fitness too, which was such a plus because obviously there's like a big correlation between your physical health and like your overall health and your mental health. And what else it did is it put me in a room with like new like-minded people. Mm. So you know how they say like you're the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. So yeah. I'm in this hospitality industry where I'm not really enjoying the work anymore. I feel angry. I feel sad. Um, And then I'm with all these other people in the hospitality industry that potentially feel the same. Yeah. So it took me out of that environment and put me in a room with like-minded people who were focused on, you know, getting physically healthy and fit and learning something new. And I also did that course part-time at night because I was still working yeah. my full-time job because I had to work my full-time job to be able to afford it. So I was still working my full-time job and then two nights a week I was going. And I think the good thing about that was no offense to anyone that's done PT full-time, but I think that because the people in that room were doing it part-time, like they had full-time jobs. Yeah. They were people that were really motivated to like, they would, they were really 
doing it because the, they really wanted to versus kind of going into a course. Not really knowing what you want out of it. For sure. Like yeah. we were talking about in the last episode, like how different studying is as yeah. a as a mature age student. So I found like the biggest the like the biggest thing for me, and I was explaining this to my client, was to do something for me again. Like if you get to the point in your life where you feel like you're doing all of these things you don't enjoy, yeah. you've got to be like, okay, well, what, how do I take that back? Like, how do I do something for me? And that was like the big catalyst for change yeah, for me. So that was my sort of big rut and the big change that I made and I can now reflect back on to be like, obviously, you know, my whole life changed from that decision. I then went into my course. I met Luke that owned F45. He offered me a job. I worked my full-time job at coffee club. Yeah. I studied two nights a week and then I started doing morning classes in the gym with him. So I would usually go wake up at 4am. I'd go do the first two classes. Then I'd drive out to Logan home, oh my God. work a 10 hour shift at the coffee club. Then I would drive back in, go to my class. And then I'd get to bed at like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And I did that for nearly six months. Yeah. But I was happy because I could see the kind of the the path for change and, and the doors that were opening because I had made that decision. And then obviously eventually I, you know, went fully over to F45 and worked there for a really long time and really enjoyed it. And then I am where I am today. So everything kind of worked out how it was supposed to, but yeah. it's just like acknowledging in those, those times that, you know, you can always find a way to do something for yourself and it doesn't necessarily need to be going to do a course. Like it could be just like, finding something that you're passionate about and making it a hobby and giving yourself that bit of joy in yeah. every day, which we're going to talk about in a moment. So, you know, just just wanted to touch on some other like little ruts, like we were saying, you know, being in, in, in a job that you're not enjoying or the wrong career. I think your home situation can be a really big one, especially, you know, when you're a little bit younger, you might be living in share houses that mm. you don't like, or even if you're older and you're living in an area that you don't like or you don't feel safe in, things like that can really put you in a rut. Friends that don't feel aligned, and I think that this is a huge one. Yeah. As we get older, we tolerate this less and less. Yeah. Um, but when we were younger, we'd have all these friends that didn't make us feel good, and I always talk about how, you know, your body has like a visceral reaction to some people. Yeah. And these days I'm just like, no, nah, not even going to entertain it. Whereas, you know, when we were younger, we would hang out with these friends that made us feel like shit. Oh, I literally like my, without well, giving too much away, like one of my best friends when I was younger was just like so mean and mean to me all the time. And then when I had a kid, literally one time was like, I just don't see why everyone likes him so much. And I was like, this is a one year old. And I put up with it for such a long time. And then one day I met some nice friends and I was like, I don't have to put up with this anymore. And then my whole life changed. Then I made all of my beautiful friends at the coffee shop I went to. Yeah. It's so funny. Hey, like yeah. I, yeah, when I was in uni, I had this really, really toxic friend who would tell all of us that we like needed to lose weight and oh. like just, and just like, or if we had boys, she would like parade herself in front of them and like, <laughs> it, and, and, and I just like, I let it go for so long. Yeah. And you kind of think, you know, these people, like everybody has great qualities and you kind of think that their redeeming qualities yeah, like yeah, maybe yeah. outweigh their poor qualities. But then you get to a point where you're just like, no. No. Yeah. Never. And I mean, now that we're older, we probably can have empathy. And at the time I had empathy for the, there was this, a lot of things going on in this friend's life. And yeah, she had redeeming qualities as well. But I was just like, this is just not it no. for me. Nowadays, like I'll nice meet friends. Yeah, and you you sometimes you'll meet someone from like the first or second meeting, and your body just like there's a few people that I can think of that like if I have to spend time around them, I get really self conscious. Yeah, and I get really worried about how I look. Yeah, and if I ever feel like that around someone, I'm just like, you are not my people. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah, or if you feel anxious to see them. Yeah, or you're hiding parts of yourself, especially for people like you and I that are just like so upfront, and so ourselves. Yeah, as soon as you're around someone that you don't feel like you can be that with, then you're like, no, no. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. So friends that don't feel aligned is a big one and that's probably pretty easy to, to take action on. <laughs> uh, money holes, like obviously finances are a massive cause of stress um, and can really get people down and that's so, so understandable. Being in the wrong relationships and, you know, feeling 
Um, like you can't move out of that situation or you're nervous to move out of that situation, not having firm boundaries. And as I said, like in hindsight, that was probably one of the factors that really contributed to me being in that rut. Yeah. And I've spoken about it before though at that time in life that I was like very much like, oh, life is happening to me. I'm so unlucky. I'm so unf- It's so unfair. Yeah. But now that I'm a little bit older, I can acknowledge that, you know, were, were people taking advantage of me or did I allow my boundaries to be so lax that I put myself in that position where that was okay? Yeah. And that all comes with time and experience. But, you know, all of these things and more can contribute to us getting into these uh, little ruts or little or big, like these things, you know, we, sh- we say little and, and when I say little, I just mean in compared to having, in comparison to having a major mental health issue. Yeah. These are big issues yeah. in life. They're not little and we're not like dismissing them. Yeah. But yeah. So we're going to talk about some of the ways that we, you know, some of the advice we have for pulling ourselves out of that. Yeah. Now. Okay. So I really need this episode today because I am really in a rut and it can be hard to pull yourself out of it without a little bit of help. So while I'm helping myself today, we're going to try and help all of you guys as well. So these are the things that I have been doing. <laughs> so just to re- just to butt in there, do you think I was reflecting back on how I dealt with situations then? Do you think how you're dealing with like the rut that you're in now, can you see like that you have so much more maturity and that you're dealing with it in such a different way? Because I think that, you know, despite everything that's happening, you have been really like proactive and level-headed. Thank you. Yes, um, I agree. (laughs) I think that I'm probably handling like my, everything that's gone on for me recently and probably like just for the last six months, probably the best I've ever handled anything. And I don't know if that's because like, physically I'm not sick anymore. So I have like more mental capacity to deal with things. Yeah. Yeah, Mentally I'm in the best place I've ever been. I have the best people around me that I've ever had. Um, and I feel like confident in my ability to cope with things. Mm. So yeah, I'm definitely like proud of that. And that makes me feel better because I definitely didn't handle things (laughs) Well, when I was younger, I would just be very emotional and let my emotions lead me and just, yeah, I'm much more level-headed now. I think that it really comes with like maturity in age and maturity in like um, uh, like emotional maturity to now be at that age we're at and, and look at things objectively and yeah. not be so steered by emotions or when we are highly emotive we know like it's not a position to be making decisions from. Yeah. When when you're younger and like not as uh, self-aware, just it was just fucking <laughs> loose. Loose. Fly off the handle sort of behaviour. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of how I made all of my decisions. Yeah, definitely not a healthy way to do it. Whereas now like a while I am also like feeling all of my feelings and processing all of my emotions – I'm just also giving everything time and being logical and yeah. stuff like that. So, yes, I do feel much better. But, yeah, so these are some of the things that I have been doing slash intend to do. So calling a friend. I take my time at first to, like, process everything that's going on in my head, but then I find it really useful to talk to my, like, very good friends. And obviously in these circumstances you choose people carefully, but I'm really lucky to have some friends like you that can look at things very objectively and that know me well and know what's going to be good for me and can give me very good practical advice without judgment. Yeah. I think that I still call my friends when I'm in that highly emotive state. Oh, for sure. And like oh, like you said, being like so strategic with who you talk to. Yeah. Like I had recently a co- phone convo with yourself and Sarah and Julia where I was hysterical. Yeah. And then like the next day after like being feeling safe to be hysterical with you guys, but then the next day being like, okay, I can actually look at things objectively now. Yeah, yeah. And like having people that aren't going to like hold it, like hold it against you when you are like that, but then they can give you the advice and then you can go, okay, well now I feel like so much more level-headed on this situation. But sometimes you've just got to get it out to someone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm lucky because I've definitely got, yeah, the people that I can 
cry and fall apart too. <laughs> fall apart. And those and those people are yeah very very important. <laughs> very important. And yeah, I feel very lucky. So yeah, calling a friend. Um, I think that that's the good first like point of call. And then obviously like being active. Uh, so running is definitely one of the best things for me, and it can give you time to either like think and make a plan, or completely shut off and just like have a chance to just be in nature and listen to music or like you, I know you don't even listen to music. No, I can, I can relate to this so heavy because people say, what do you think about when you're running? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm either thinking about everything or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's one or the other. It's either like meditative and it's just like nothing. Yeah. You're just running. You might be like looping a lyric in your head or just like just running and thinking about literally nothing. Like your mind is blank. Yeah. Or you are nutting out some yeah. sort of big life problem. <laughs> Literally. Like, and, and either way is good. <laughs> it's giving you, it's like giving, and if you don't like running, fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like giving yourself space to see what comes up. Yeah. So if you don't like running, it could look like going for a walk without yeah. music podcast headphones and just seeing what comes up for you. Yeah. Or even just sitting in silence, so yeah. like even just having a sit without your phone, maybe you've got a journal and just giving yourself space to see what comes up. And I think that a, the reason a lot of people struggle with running is because they struggle to be alone with their thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Which like I used to be so scared of being alone with my thoughts at night was just like my worst time because everyone would go to bed and I'd be like, oh my God, and then everything would just be too hard to cope with. But now I find it so, especially there's like, what, five people and a dog in my house. It's very loud all the time and it's very hard to think. Mm. So yeah, running or now I go to the gym and I listen to my favourite podcast, Sentimental Garbage, and like listening to us, it's just like being in a chat with friends Mm. and that's nice as well to just kind of, and it's not a very serious podcast, so I can still think. Easy listening. Yeah. 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 Very chill. My other thing is like doing an overhaul and I guess this is what you were kind of saying before. So this can be like decluttering and like selling stuff on the marketplace, which I know you've been doing a lot lately. I have. So just like even things that like. I what about I, like a bedroom rearrange? Yes, bedroom rearrange. <laughs> <laughs> Anything like that. Uh, like getting your hair cut and starting a new skincare routine. New hair, new me. Just feeling fresh. Um, doing a budget, if it's money related, can really get clarity. Yeah. On the situation. Yeah, it's funny how people say that. It's like, oh, who knew the solution was to really look at what was going on, which can be really daunting. <laughs> it's when very you're hard in that situation, but then you can yeah. actually make a plan because putting your head in the sand only makes things worse, right? Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah, sitting down and looking at things properly, like really forcing yourself to do that, and that's hard, and that takes a lot of like mental strength. So you have to pick the right time to do it, but then you feel so much better once it's done, mm. and you have like some control over the situation. Um, and then like clearing out your fridge and doing like a grocery shop and getting like really healthy, delicious, nutritious food, even like buying vitamins, like just doing things to make it feel like you're making some kind of like positive change. Yeah. It's something for you. Yeah. Like something little. Can I just go back? This is such a pivot. Yeah. 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 This, just like flashing back to the, the nostalgia app. And yeah. I just remembered like a decluttering or movement. What about when you're a kid yeah. and you rearranged your room yeah. and your room was like peak clean? Yeah. The feeling of going to bed that night. And like the smell. And then waking up the next morning in your new room. Yeah. Oh. It was the best. Best. And like, you're like a bit disorientated but yeah. then you're like, remember you rearranged your room? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the best. I remember for like, for like maybe my 11th birthday I was really into Winnie the Pooh and I think mum had like redone my whole room for my birthday and so I had like a Winnie the Pooh border and like really win- like pretty Winnie the Pooh framed picture and like bed, like all the bed linen and stuff and I'd gone to bed and like something smelled really good. I don't know. It feels like a candle from Ikea or something. And I went to bed in my new like Winnie the Pooh nighty. and I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I, I am happy. Yeah, this is so nice. We should go to Ikea. We should go to um, Ikea. I love Ikea. I love Ikea too. It's and I best. really want a new bedspread. So. Oh, I want a new bedspread too. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Done. Um... So going outside, like you've just said, going for a walk, just being in the sun, going being to the beach, putting feet in the sand. Yeah. I always have loved, uh, well, there's that thing, right, that says that the ocean actually, there's like some really su- really good science behind why the ocean is so calming. Yeah. Something to do with the water molecules. Yeah. And it's like a reset. But for me, it's always been like, 
whatever is like the ocean. And I say this all the time and I said it when I was in Cronulla because it's like such a, like a long view. Yeah. Like the ocean's fucking huge, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, your issues are nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like when you look at like the size of the ocean, I don't know, does that sound so stupid? No, no, no. That's like a thing. My issues seem so small yeah. in comparison to the yeah. size of the ocean. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. And I think like you were saying, like, you could even just go sit on like a picnic rug with a book and like just do nice things yeah. that take you out of whatever your situation is. I like to take my kids to the park because when I'm in a rut, like being around my kids just makes me feel so much better because yeah. it shifts my focus to them and it reminds me like what's important. And they're your happy space. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just silly and funny and they don't know what's going on with you so they don't ask any questions. <laughs> My first one was like, listen to your intuition. Like anytime there's that little voice in the Mm -hmm. back of your head that tells you you should move out of a situation, you need to listen to it. Yeah. And I'm not saying like immediately take action because sometimes we get like these these wild thoughts. Yeah. But you know when it's there and it's just like tapping and being like, you know that this situation isn't serving you anymore. Yeah. Like you know. I have notoriously sat in situations that I knew weren't for me anymore. Yeah. And that's why I got Just Leap tattooed yeah. on my hand to remind me to like not be afraid and just to take action because as soon as I like, you know, I'll have like this thought in the back of my head, as soon as I take action on it, I just get this massive feeling of self-trust that it's yeah. like the right decision. And I just think, fuck, why have I been sitting on this for like a year? Yeah. What are we afraid of? And we talked about it in like the fear episode that we're just like so fearful of change. Yeah. But what's that? It was on my vision board last year and it was, oh, I had so much about change, but it was like change is scary, but so is staying the same. Yeah. And, you know, whatever's out there is probably going to be better for you than the situation that you're sitting in, especially like you just, you just know, you just have it like tapping, tapping in the back all the time to be like, you know, it's time to leave that job or leave that person or stop, um, you know, stop entertaining this friendship. Like, you know, yeah. The next one is gratitude. Not going to harp on about it. (laughs) Go back to the personal development app. Yeah. But it's that whole thing of just like being grateful for what you have, the little things and attracting more of that. And that can be really important. Oh, when when you're you're making like a big change and you feel like you're losing the life you had, you can hold on to the things that you still have and that'll get you through. Yeah, all those little moments of joy. And that was the next one, finding small moments of joy in every single day Yeah, and living your life for you. And that could be as simple as, you know, going to get your favourite coffee every morning and just like being grateful to be able to do that yeah. or, you know, like we said, getting out in nature, just look for those or like, uh, you know, playing a game with your friend on yeah. like, you know, doing Wordle with your friend, just like look for those tiny little moments of joy and make sure you make that a priority every day. The next one I put was like stop chasing someone else's life and worrying about how your life looks to others yeah. and focusing on how it feels on the inside. And I think that that's really important in the sort of social media era Mm -hmm. that we're in, that everyone's always worried about what their life looks like from the outside or they're comparing their lives to other people's lives that they see on social media. Yeah. But you should really focus on what your life feels like. Yeah. I listened to a really good podcast yesterday and everyone's always telling me to listen to Diary of a CEO and I just never have. But yesterday I listened to a specific episode and the guy was talking about like people on social media, normally the people that are like shouting the loudest are the people that are not doing so great. So the people are like, look how great my life is, look how great my relationship is. Like someone give me validation of how great everything is. Like normally they're not the people that are doing that well. So like don't compare yourself to them because it's not real. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's really good advice. Yeah. And it's it's so like social media is such a weird thing. Yeah. Because you're just overthinking what everyone else thinks all the time. And I remember at the start of this year, I really wanted to post more content on like happiness and gratitude and like creating your, you know, dream life and like how content and happy I was feeling but I was like really self-conscious that some people were going to be like yeah we get it yeah yeah, like, yeah you're having a good time yeah and that they would be judgmental of me it's fucking weird man it is weird so like post what you want to post don't care what anyone else thinks don't compare your life to others but yeah. focus on what your life feels like from the inside yeah and I think like once you start doing that because that's that's 
That's where you're actually living. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not living online in the grid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, change the people who you are around. Like, as I said, you're the sum of the people that you spend the most time with. So positivity is contagious, but so is negativity. Mm -hmm. So if you're around people all the time that are, you know, really negative or that complain a lot, like it can really bring you down and you'll find your, like you, you do, you like suck up the personality of the people that you're around. Like we even pick up their like speech mannerisms and things like this. Like we become so alike. So it just be really, really conscious of that. And, yeah. you know, once you get to a good place, you'll find like you can't really tolerate those negative people anymore. No, I thought then you were going to say negative Nancys. <laughs> negative Nancys. <laughs> so true, so true. Yeah. And like it's evident in like I noticed so many of my friends, I picked up saying right from like my best friend Amber and so many of my friends now I hear going like right and I'm like, oh, that's from me. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. My friend says she even says it at work now in like very serious conversations. She'll be like, right. That's, yeah, I say it in text a lot. Yeah. Like when you um, accidentally said slaps the other week. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Also, I want to personally shout out the person that left, left us a review this week and at the end said slay. Yes, we love that. That. You're the best. That <laughs> is so you. good. Yeah. The first person to write slaps in a review might get a special prize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this podcast slaps. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously this one is a, like a, a what if, but I just wanted to add this in. If you can find a way to monetize the shit that you're passionate about, try and do it and take the chance. Like even if it's just a side hustle, like if you're really passionate about art and you create, you know, a t-shirt company or whatever it is, like you will find that you are so much more willing to work hard on the things that really light you up. Yeah. And if you want to do it and you don't know how to do it, find someone that already has and ask them to mentor you. Yeah. Yeah. Like just ask them, I know a few friends that have amazing careers that they're passionate about and they've gone and asked someone if they can do work experience. Yeah. And even when I was transitioning to go online, I had absolutely no idea how to do it. I found a person that I really resonated with and I asked them to mentor me. Yeah. And I like improved by leaps and bounds and my business, which I thought was going to be a little side hustle is now my full-time job. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Which it does feel amazing. And I know that that's not, you know, that's not always possible for everyone, but even if you can find like a little side hustle, you never know what it might turn into and you'll be so passionate about doing it. Like it won't feel like work. Yeah. And it'll just make you happy. Yeah. Like creating the podcast. Exactly. (laughs) Um, so have hobbies and passions and make sure that you're putting time into these. And we spoke about this on the episode with Danny. Yeah. And she was saying like, let's normalize having hobbies as adults. Yes. Like yeah. taking up a new sport, doing a craft thing. Yeah. Have hobbies. a book club. Oh, yes. Yeah. Actually, I want to I want to be in a book club. Well, I still think we should do a bread and butter book club. Oh, if you would like us to do a bread and butter bo- book club, reach out. Yeah, DM us. I think we should. That's so fun. Yeah. Also, it'll can. expand both of our genres because we read very different books. And then the last one, oh, we've already touched on this. Okay. This is just, with yeah, all the tips are so aligned. Right. Uh, take time to sit with your thoughts and see what comes up. Yeah. These are some like more tangible ones that seem a little bit easier at first. Like an action point. Yes. You can do this today. You could do this right now. So I'll watch things. I have my go-tos that make me feel really motivated. The Last Dance, which everyone's heard me talk about a million times, the Michael Jordan documentary series on Netflix, uh, Chef's Table, also on Netflix, and Fill the Beat, which is like a Mark Ronson music doco on Apple. But whatever makes you feel motivated or better. I like- remember when I was having my first ever experience with anxiety and I told you I was watching Law and Order SVU. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is not what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yes, I thought that was very strange. I try and read articles about whatever I'm going through and see if I can get any tips. You know, I'm a research girl. Yeah. And I try and read things that are science-based or at least in like psychology daily, like things that are kind of backed up yeah. um, that I know will help. I listen to podcasts with expert advice and lived experience, obviously The Imperfect, Smell Robertson, things like that. And I listen to music, which I do 24 hours a day, but I'm very intentional with what I listen to when I'm in a rut. Yeah. I'll listen to like Major Lazer. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, stuff like that. Fun. Yeah. I'd listen to Greta Ray. 
Yes. Yes. That's a good one. Cause yeah. yeah. She's so positive. Yeah. Positive vibes. Yeah. And I think what you were saying with like, you know, listening to podcasts and reading articles, it's like what appeals to you. Because yeah. I was talking to one of my clients last night and she was saying that her GP had recommended her to listen to a specific audiobook. And she's like, she knows that I don't like positive affirmations. Yeah. Um, where something like that would be really resonate with me. Yeah. And then as soon as they get right into the science, I'm like, you're like, bye-bye. My brain switched off. I just want to hear the floaty fun stuff where yeah. you're like, need the science. I'm like, what if I do this? What will this do to my brain? Yeah. <laughs> how will this affect me? Yeah. What are the statistics on how this works out? Yeah. 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 That makes me feel better. And yes, I do have a few don't do's. Don't do's. I didn't think about that. Yeah. So I really recommend not going shopping because it can be a dangerous game. If you go shopping when you're in a rut and you think, oh, buying this will make me feel better. Like it might make you feel better for like a minute, but then it's not going to solve your problems. I think it's funny too when you're in a money rut, you'll be more likely to like yeah, go and spend therapy, money, which just obviously makes the situation so, so much productive. Worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I also recommend steering clear of drinking, which I know is easier for me to say because I don't really drink. Um, but often people will be like, "Oh, I'm so stressed and I'm stuck in this. I'm just going to go out and have a big one with my friends." And then, yeah, you might feel good while you're doing it, but you're probably more likely to have anxiety the next day. And you've spent money and you don't feel good and you may have like unleashed on everyone that night. So then you're feeling I was going to say if I was to go out and get drunk when yeah. I was in uh, having like a, a real crisis, 100% I'll cry and have a full-blown mental breakdown. Yeah, yeah. And then feel terrible the next day. Embarrassed. So embarrassed. So embarrassed. Yeah. Probably another one to add to the don't do list is to fall back on like poor behaviours like emotional eating. Yes. Um, because like you were saying with the shopping thing, it's giving you like that that really quick dopamine hit but it's just it's not – fixing the symptom yeah um, and, and it obviously can make the situation worse and then you feel bad about that and then you're creating that that guilt cycle yeah yeah 100 percent. I would also add to the don't do list and like we were talking about like confiding in the right people yes I would be like don't do like don't confide in the wrong people don't like that you know those misery loves company sort of crowd the people that like you might confide in and then they're going to hold it against you later they're going to bring it back and be like well remember when you were feeling like this or remember when you did this and just like not let you or the, and, yeah. or the people who are like quite miserable like miserable themselves so they kind of like get off on the idea that you're like yeah, a sad sack too or the ones that um just want to loop it back to them yes well when this happened to me yeah well I'm feeling like this yeah and you're like that's not helping me at all yeah all that yeah and the people that don't have your best intentions at heart and might be really happy to see you make this like decision that you know isn't gonna benefit you yeah in the long run yeah and also I think knowing that anything can be changed at any time I think you said this to me yeah yeah the other day so if you make one decision and it's the wrong decision like you can change that yeah. And the, everything works out how it's supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can change your mind. Yeah. You can change your mind. I think we forget that all the time. Anytime. We do. Yeah. We think every, we, we antagonize over every little decision. Yeah. Like it's so incredibly permanent. Yeah. But if you take a new job and you don't like it, get another new job. Yeah. And no, like, we're not saying there's not consequences to some decisions because obviously there is. Absolutely. But a lot of things like you can change and be like, I did. I made a mistake, and then you can go back to it. Still. Yeah, you can fix things. Yeah. Everything can be fixed. Everything can be fixed. Everything can be like yeah. You can, you are allowed to change your mind. Yeah, at any given time. Not at all. All right. <laughs> You've made us a little segment. Oh yeah. Oh, did you prepare something? For yes, this? I did. Okay. Yep, I did. I I prepared this last week. I did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want me to go first? I wrote this script a little while ago. I wrote it. I think I wrote this script before my holiday. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I can do this pretty easily. Okay. So these are five things that bring you joy every day. Yeah. You go first. I've got obviously coffee. (laughs) Coffee. (laughs) No surprise. Playing strands, wordle, connections, chordal and spelling bee with Oscar every day. That's our little ritual. So we wake up before everyone else does. We have our like breakfast. Wait, do you guys do quirtle? Yeah. That's so hard. 
I do Octurtle as well, not with Oscar. Eight? Yeah. And they're all gone at the same time? Yeah. That's loose. It's hard when you start, but then you get used to it. That's but, um, so loose. Yeah, I have my coffee and I sit with Oscar and we do that snuggling on the couch in the morning. It's just the best thing in the world. Cute. So cute. Getting home from being on a night out, even if it's just like going to – uh, anything like a PNC meeting or like whatever everyone else does. And then just like being out and it's cold and, you know, you're kind of keen to get home and then you get home and you put your pajamas on, you sit in front of the TV, yeah. give you snacks. That's the best. Um, the gym and running. Yep. And the way Soul and Magnolia wake up in the morning, <laughs> it's just the best. They both sleep. They both sleep so hard and they wake up and their faces are all like squished and they've got really messy hair and they just look like they have no idea where they are and they're just both like quite grumpy and it's just the best. Oh, that's adorable. It's so cute. That's yeah. adorable. Yeah, I love it. All right. Oh Mine goodness. would be when I let Kenny into my room yeah. in the morning and he comes in and he gives me like that first morning cuddle. Cute. So cute. This one's like really specific, but when I go for a run and then I go for a quick dip in the ocean. Nice. And then I'm just walking across the road barefoot. Yeah. And I'm just like. I feel like I, I can like, it, oh, I feel like I can experience that as you say it. I know the feeling. I am so happy. Yeah. The other one is like just the flexibility in my life, like being able to go and have a coffee or like a lunch on a weekday yeah, and just having the ability to do that. Like every time I'm doing that, I just think, how good how lucky is, I can do this? How good is life? Yeah. Just the first like two steps of feet in the sand. Yes, the best. And then the last one would be when I actually catch a really good wave. Yeah. And I'm still shocked. That, that I can, you can do surf. it. <laughs> it doesn't happen every time. That's so like, good. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. They're good ones. Or what about one more? Yeah. Like the first bite of really delicious food. Oh, yeah. Like pizza just came to mind when you said that. The first you know what bite came of into pizza. Mind? Tacos. Like, <laughs> I had tacos last night. Oh, of course you did. <laughs> they were average. Oh. No, like a creamy like four cheese gnocchi mm. and it goes in my mouth and I'm I made gnocchi the other night. It was bloody delicious. Or the first sip of a really good Aperol spritz. Or the first sip of a really cold Coke. Or what about a great coffee? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing like that. We really hope that you got something out of today's episode that may help you with your next rut, be it big or small. Remember that all things are temporary and the support of the right people will always get you through. And if today's episode has brought anything up for you, again, please see the resources in our show notes and DM us if you need someone to talk to. Thank you to all of our loyal listeners. We appreciate every single one of you and we would like to thank you for the time you take to listen to our podcast every single week. Thanks, guys.